Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for allowing us to come together, Lord Jesus, again in this Zoom session to advance your kingdom, O Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving us the information and receiving this information that will help us to be obedient to your word, Lord Jesus, regardless of how we feel and what this flesh may want to do. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you do, and we ask you to cover those in the blood that weren't able to make it here tonight, and we will see them on the next class, Lord Jesus. And we just pray in Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Your body source of energy. Oh, no, I, I just can't emphasize how important it is to get a handle on this digestive system. It is very important. So I'm going to talk about the digestive system. We're going to include enzymes and probiotics. We're also going to talk about the mouth, the stomach, and then I'm going to have some uh, gut busters that I'm going to talk about at the end, and we'll have the questions and comments. The digestive system is the transformer of food into energy. It's a builder and repairer of our body tissues. This conveyor belt is a 30 feet long from the mouth to the anus. I mean, wow, imagine the length of that, 30 feet long from your mouth all the way till it goes out of your body. Okay, let's talk about some anatomy now. Digestion begins in the mouth. Believe it or not, it begins in the mouth. It mixes with saliva, which contains pytalin, which is a uh, enzyme, amylase. It dissolves your food immediately. And saliva provides lubrication also for that food to slide down that esophagus. You know, our body produces about a quart and a half of saliva every day. But you know what? If you're eating and drinking at the same time, you're probably a little short on that quart and a half. Because holistically, you should drink all of your liquids at least an hour and a half to two hours before your meal. And the reason being is, look at the, what the saliva is doing. The saliva is trying to digest your food. If you're drinking some liquid along with your food, then after a while your body's going to say, well, we don't need any saliva. It seems to be something there. It's going to detect that liquid. And then it's going to cut down the production of your saliva if you're eating and drinking at the same time. So that's why holistically it's important, even if you go an hour before a meal. You know, if you haven't never done this, maybe you could start out at a half hour. But an hour to an hour and a half, an hour and a half, I mean, to two hours is like best. And as you can see, you don't want to mess up the process. It starts right in your mouth. Now, the journey of your food, okay, it starts in the mouth and goes down the esophagus and to the stomach. Now, in the stomach, food is mixed with hydrochloric acid and pepsin, which is an enzyme. And once it mixes with these two substances, it's called chyme. Chyme enters the small intestines by way of the pyloric sphincter. This process, after it goes in the small intestine, that's where all of your food is assimilated. It's assimilated and then if any nutrients are there, the body takes those nutrients and prepares it to go throughout the body to feed all of the systems, all of the organs, 
all of the body tissue and everything else in the body to make it work properly. And this ends at the important junction called the ileocecal valve. The ileocecal valve controls mucus and the exit of that chime into the large intestine. So after it takes all the nutrients from the food, what's ever left in that chime is passed on to the large intestine to be processed out of the body. Let me just go back on one thing I think I wanted to touch on or emphasize a little. It's right here. Uh, that, like a little valve, is opens up when the food turns to chime and allows it to go into the small intestine. Now, if, that, if you're eating and drinking at the same time, then it's a chance that pyloric sphincter may open up prematurely, allowing some food to go through that hasn't been properly uh, processed or digested or broken down in the stomach. And if that happens, and if that the pyloric sphincter opens up because you have all this liquid in there, you know, eating and drinking at the same time, there's a possibility that you can allow undigested proteins to get into your body. And you don't want undigested proteins going through that little valve into the small intestine where your body is going to be assimilating the, pro the uh, nutrients. Uh, sometimes people have problems, you know, having these proteins that get past the stomach and they end up in the intestine. And a lot of times it's, it's not a, you know, not a good thing. So I just wanted to point that out. Additionally, you know, what can happen if you're eating and drinking at the same time? Now let's talk about enzymes. Enzymes completely break down your food and allow proper digestion and complete absorption of that food. Now our bodies wasn't designed to process this shelf life food that we have in a lot of grocery stores. And it's also difficult for it to deal with cooked food because heat destroys enzymes. As you all know, when we talked about that in our live food class, heat destroys enzymes. And if you're eating cooked food, then you're only getting anywhere from uh, 60, well, 60 to 100% of the nutrients are lost in cooked food. 60 to 100 are lost. So non-cooked food is the way to get more enzymes. And those non-cooked foods, like we talked about in live food, is the whole foods, fruits and vegetables, fermented foods. Those have the most enzymes, and the fermented foods have those good bacteria in it that your body needs. Now, enzymes are required also for detoxification. Enzymes turn fat-soluble toxins into water-soluble toxins for easy elimination. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Enzymes turn fat-soluble toxins into water-soluble toxins so they can easily pass out of the body. The less enzymes you have in your body, the more toxicity. And also, that's... It helps with that pH balance. I think we talked about that one time. Uh, Gary was mentioning that in a class uh, about the pH balance in the body. It's important. And the enzymes help that your body to keep the correct pH balance that it needs. Enzymes also reduce overall inflammation. When you have inflammation, like in an illness or a disease or uh something like that, you also have pain. So if you have pain, then more than likely you know you have inflammation too. And this is one way from God's food, okay, 
the live food, you can intake more of that and help that inflammation be subdued maybe, okay, by intaking more enzymes. These are some interesting facts. There are more organs in the digestive system than any other system in the body. This is where the majority of the organs are. This is why I'm really trying to emphasize this is an important system, the digestive system, because this is where most of the organs are. Two-thirds of your energy or I like to say 60% of your energy is lost or taken up in digesting your food. So you want to try to do things to get back some of that energy. And the way you can do that right away is by eating live food, eating those food that the foods that have more enzymes. Some of the problems with the digestive system is transit time, okay? And we're going to talk about that. Transit time, lack of enzymes, and a lack of pro, uh, probiotics, okay? These are things that can hurt or hamper your digestive system. The transit time is basically how long it takes the food to go from your mouth to out your anus. Okay, and why that's important is because when we talked about the colon uh, last class, the colon can hold on to food or waste anywhere from three to 10 hours. And after them 10 hours or after five hours, actually after five hours in the colon, that food can putrefy, it can rot and, and you know, just start turning into all kind of mess down there in the colon. So this why transit time, the time it goes from your mouth to your, to out of your body is important because you don't want all that garbage sitting down there in your colon if you can help it. Okay? Average person takes 24 hours. You know, you don't want to be too fast, but you also don't want to be too slow. Okay, they use the analogy of a train going into a station. If you eat three meals a day, look at that as three trains going in the station. Okay, if three trains went in the station, three trains got to go out. Now, if you eat three meals a day, you should have a bowel movement for every meal. Okay, we talked about that in our last class, right? You should, you should have a bowel movement for every meal. And if you don't, then guess what? Some of those meals are being held back somewhere in your intestines. Okay? If you eat three meals and say you only have one bowel movement, then you got two meals still back up in your colon. The next day you eat three meals again. Okay? Yes, sir. You have one bowel movement again. Mm -hmm. Okay, how, ma how many meals do you have stuck back in that colon now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, you eat three meals again the next day, and you have your, your religious sacred uh, one bowel movement again. So now mm -hmm. you, you got six meals that's mm -hmm. stuck in that colon. Can you imagine mm -hmm. that? What yeah. is going on with those meals? Why are they not coming out? Okay. Isn't that a large part due to which causes the obesity? That that could be it because we talked about that one class. The average uh, American, I think it was saying, holds anywhere from 15 to 20 pounds of waste in the colon. Wow. 15 to 20 pounds of waste. Mm. So... The transit time is very important. And we have a a, a juice. I'm going to give you all the recipe. It's called the beet juice experiment. Okay? 
And what this does is tell you, it'll help, help you to figure out how fast or how slow your food is going from your mouth to out your anus, okay? Mm. That's what the beet juice experiment will do, okay? When you buy these ingredients, try to get them organic as, as, as best you can. Try to get, if you can get all of them organic, hey, great. If you can't get them all, just try to get the most that you can organic. Okay, you got your half cup of cranberry juice, a quarter cup of fresh cranberries, a small beet, a quarter of fresh or frozen strawberries, and just two teaspoons of honey or stevia. That's just for taste. If you don't need to taste thing, then you, you don't have to put the honey or stevia. Put that in the high-speed blender, and what you do is try to drink that right before your meal, and write the date and time down, and when you have a, your next bowel movement, it's going to come out looking red, almost like beet juice, because mm -hmm. that beet juice holds its color, just like uh, B vitamins. It's going to yeah. come out of your bowels looking real red like beets, and when it do, you write that date down, you write that time down, and you're going to be able to tell how long it took for your food to go from your mouth to out of your anus. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'll probably send this at the class, this recipe. So y'all have to worry about writing it. I'll send it at the class. Okay, let's talk about probiotics opposite of antibiotics. You know, you're always hearing about antibiotics. Your doctors want to put you on antibiotics. You have to take antibiotics. Antibiotics create anti-life. Okay? Amen. It cre creates anti-life. You want to prevent harmful organisms, especially these little parasites. Those are some bad little buggers. You don't want them to make home in your digestive system because, trust, they can. It's a lot of bacteria. It's a lot of garbage down there, okay? This is where most disease start in the body, in the colon. So supplements, supplementing our diets, you can do that because sometimes it's really needed. If you know that you're not eating the food or the amount of food, you know, that's live to get the proper nutrients, then, hey, you, you got a supplement then. There's no way around yeah. that, especially if you have some kind of uh, illness or problem. Okay, once you have that problem or that uh, malfunction, whatever it is, then the best way to get out of that is to start on either supplements or some herbal program to try to get you out of that, that rut or whatever, wherever you're trying to deal with. Because it's obvious then you haven't eaten the type of foods that you need to eat or live the lifestyle that you need to live or you wouldn't be in that predicament. Correct. Okay. Probiotics provide immunity. It helps your body to have more good bacteria versus bad bacteria, okay? The good bacteria is going to help that colon to fight off these parasites and all this other bacteria and stuff in that, in that uh, digestive system. It's also going to, you know, give you stronger immunity. And y'all have that when I gave y'all that, uh, my... Uh, Rejuvelac, the quinoa, the quinoa water. Y'all got that recipe. There you go. You can make your own good bacteria. Just ferment that quinoa, put it in some water, right? All right. So y'all got that. 75% of our immune system, okay, yeah, is good. found in the digestive system, mostly in the colon. Probiotics yeah. account for 75% of our immunity. 75% of our immunity. And look, it says 
10 times 100 trillion. Okay, who has taken or eaten 10 times 100 trillion of friendly bacteria? I tell you right at the top, there's no way that I, I have taken that. Not in a yeah. meal, not in a couple of meals. Mm -mm. I, I supplement too. And in my supplements, I see billions on it. It don't say nothing yeah. about trillions. It say it have billions of this bacteria, billions of that bacteria. This thing is saying 10 times 100 trillion. Normally, that's normal friendly bacteria that you need in your intestines. So if yeah. you're not supplementing, okay, you need to mm. jump on it quick. Start making mm. that rejuvelac water, that, that quinoa fermented water. Start making that. I use both. I make the quinoa water and I still supplement because 10 times 100 trillion, that's a lot. That's a lot of bacteria. Yeah, I find I find acidophilus is is great for building the good bacteria in your okay. system. It is. Whichever one works for you. I use bifidophilus a lot. Okay. I don't know. My body just seemed to be more in tune with bifidophilus. But there are some times when I have acidophilus. There are some times when I have both. Because I'm going to talk about some of the products I use. And for my YouTube uh, viewers out there, I'm going to give you all some of uh, the products I use so you all would know. Okay. Now, the friendly flora problems, the use of antibiotics, chemicals, drugs, you know, the standard American diet, all of these lack prebiotics. They deplete our population of good bacteria. Yes. Okay, here's the support. These are the things you should be doing. Okay, your diet, Okay, raw, you know, raw, whole, that's where you get the most enzymes, good bacteria, raw, whole, a step off from raw, whole, you can use juice, you can either juice or you can high speed blend. Okay, I talked about mm -hmm. that. It's best for a person to juice their fruits, veggies, whatever, if you have some kind of digestive issue. Then that way, your body won't, you know, have to suffer because you got this issue. Just do the juicing and you'll get the nutrients and your body wants to deal with that fiber. But if you don't have to worry about that, then you can high speed blend, which includes the fiber. Water, very important. We talk cool. about holistically, uh, what? Half your body weight in ounces. Correct. Half your body weight in ounces, especially when you're dealing with some kind of issue, some kind of illness, some kind of change in your life. Half your body weight in ounces you should be drinking. Spring water. Spring water is best. You don't need to drink uh, distilled water only if you're cleansing. If you're on a cleansing program and you're cleansing your body, that's when you drink distilled water. Other than that, you need spring water. Quality supplements. Okay, that's a must. Supplements are a must. And I know I, I talk about the ones I use a lot because I know I have researched this company when I was in school. I researched them myself. And they are up there. They are up there as far as e uh, quality, efficacy of, of a product. They are way up there. Because that quality makes a, a big difference. You don't want to get junk. Like I talked about before, some manufacturers put fillers, fillers. in their products. They put fillers. Okay, that's something that they substituting for, say, B vitamins or vitamin C or, you know, some kind of mineral, iron. They put in fillers in there with substitutes and stretches their money, okay? And that's when you probably see them on sale, all these vitamins on sale or something like that. You could buy two for one and all of this. You know, you gotta be careful. You gotta know the manufacturer. Is that a good quality product? 
who's making their product? Do they test their products? Yeah. Our, our company, not that I'm selling them, our company have over 600 tests that they can do on their products, over 600. Okay, water. Like I said, spring water is best. And, you know, I, I used to hear a lot about alkaline and alkaline water. Yeah, alkaline water is good. Alkaline water is great. And they have all these other systems out there that make all this good water that you can drink. And, you know, it's good to have a filtration system in your house. It's, it's, it's real good to have it, you know, for the entire house, the whole house. Especially, I know, here in Florida, because this water is hard. If you didn't know, it is hard, and it has all kind of uh, garbage and stuff in it. Mm. You know, I, I went through, I was trying to find me a filtration system, but I don't know. It was just too much of uh, these companies coming, putting this stuff in my, my mailbox, and they was trying to charge outrageous prices, so I didn't find one. But you know what I do have? I have a shower filter because that's more important than the water you're drinking. Why? Because skin, our skin is the largest organ. Yeah. It's the largest organ. Therefore, the amount of water that you're bathing and that you're showering in makes a big difference. Okay? Makes a big difference. You want a shower filter first. Okay, and it's a lot less expensive. This is a company I dealt with when I was in San Diego. Okay, uh, they have some good products. They have some good uh, filters for the shower, for the whole house. Uh, I, I, I bought a couple of there. I had one for my uh, shower filter and you know, this. if y'all want to check it out, then that's up to y'all. I'm not pushing nobody. Like I say, this kind of information I have for my YouTube uh, followers. Uh, but I also use another company since I came into Florida, a product called Brondell, B-R-O-N-D-E-L-L, -L, Brondell. They had a real, seemed like it was a real quality uh, shower filter, and I bought you know, a couple of them, and uh, I even got a, uh, what was that? I even got a bidet. <laughs> I, I got a bidet from Walmart. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, I, I always kind of wanted to try them because when I was in Japan traveling, I was in the airport in Japan, and they had bidets in the toilets in the airport. Can you believe this? I was like, I turned that thing on. It had all kind of buttons on it. It had water, warm water, a warmer, all of this. I start, I sat on that thing and I almost missed my flight. I was, I was like, man, this thing feels good. I was sitting in there. I almost forgot where I was at. <laughs> I'm telling you, those bidets, I mean, in the airport in Japan, I was like, this is unbelievable. They are serious about their bidets there. Oh, yeah. So here's a test that y'all can do. And if y'all need, I can send this slide to at the class. Drink a full glass of water one half hour before your meal. Okay, a half hour before your meal, drink a full glass of water. If you no longer are hungry, guess what? You are thirsty. You are probably dehydrated. Try eating a full meal without any liquids, no liquids at all. And if so, you are properly hydrated. If you didn't need to drink any water then, you are already properly hydrated. Mm. If not, you just consider taking more water in. Try to do your water, like I say, hour and a half to two hours in between meals. You know, you can drink your water or liquids. But 
the the better you are about not mixing it with your food, the better your digestion gonna be, the better you're gonna feel. You're not gonna probably, you know, you're probably gonna some of that bloating and some of that gas and some of the, all those other little things are probably gonna dissipate when you start paying attention holistically to these things. Trust me, I've done them. Oh yes, it works. Okay, food enzymes. Okay, like I said, I'm I'm about advancing the kingdom here in the small group. A lot of this is for my uh, YouTube followers. A product we have called Proact Design. Proact Design is is like a general enzymic formula that helps to break down and digest your food, and it optimizes absorption of your nutrients optimizes absorption that's this one here food enzymes this one here it digests fats carbs and proteins just one capsule of this food enzyme this product here that I have on my website it will digest 30 grams of protein 30 grams of carbs and 20 grams of fat Okay, one capsule. <laughs> this is a powerful, powerful product here. Okay. Okay, digestion is important. So you want the best. Uh, the Proactizyme is a plant source enzymic formula. It has protease, it has amylase, it has glucoamylase, lipase, and all these other enzymes in it. This is a combination of various enzymes to handle any type of diet, okay? It's an overall general enzymic uh, product, okay? When you're having problems and you know that you're not eating a lot of the live foods, you know you're not eating a lot of foods that have a lot of enzymes, then you want to supplement okay you you definitely have to supplement this is one that i take every day to uh one of our is bifidophilus and actually this bifidophilus has acidophilus in it too it has acidophilus and bifidophilus it's called bifidophilus fluorophores it's enteric coated meaning it has a coating over the capsule that won't break down until it reaches the intestine where you need that good bacteria. And see, it has 11 billion, okay? And we talked about what you normally needed 10 times 100 trillion. Right. So that's why I use this and that fermented quinoa water. I drink that and take these. You know, trying to get close to that 100 trillion, because that's a lot. It also kills yeast. A lot of times I have females that I'm working with, and they have problems with yeast, and I put them on this product, bam, knocks it out. Okay? Wherever it is. All right. Preguntas, preguntas. <laughs> A little my Spanish. Any comments? Questions? You you have a verse for us, Betty? You have a scripture you can read for us? Yes, I have uh, Exodus chapter 15, verses 22 to 26. And the first half is going to be talking about water. And we you spent some time talking about water. I'm just going to start at the 22nd verse. So Moses bought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Sur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Moriah, they could not drink the waters of the Moriah, for they were, they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Moriah. And the people mumbered against Moses saying what shall we drink 
And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord shewed him a tree, which when he had cast into the water, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance. And there he proven them and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. So water has a lot of good properties, and it's, it flushes your system. So, you know, again, like he was saying earlier, whatever your body weight, divide that by two, and that's how many ounces of water you, you want to drink, because it's very important. Yep. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that, Betty. Uh-huh. And I just want to say, or add in there, I didn't on this slide. Can anyone name the digestive compound that makes fat soluble in the body? It's a digestive compound that makes fat soluble in the body. Anybody? Gary? Anybody know what that substance or compound is? It makes fat soluble in the body. Not for me. Let me help you with it. Bile salts. Bile salts. B-I-L-E salts. Bile salts. They break down fats and they make them available for further breakdown by lipase, which is an enzyme we talked about. So bile salts, a lot of time you will hear people talking about different products and they'll say we have bile salts in these. Well, those bile salts help to break down fats and make them available for further breakdown in the body. Yeah, enzymes break down our food into smaller compounds so they can be absorbed into the bloodstream and carried out throughout the body to feed the organs, the body tissues, so on and so forth. Let me let me throw something up here for y'all that uh, see if y'all can figure these words out. Just a little. They got to do with nutrition, of course. They got to do with holistic nutrition or just basic nutrition. But these three words. Play around with them, try to unscramble them and see what the word is. And put it in the chat if you get it. I'll give y'all a couple of minutes to figure that one out. Number two is obvious. Okay, what's number two then, Gary? Vitamin. Okay, you put it in the chat. <laughs> All right, Gary got number two. Number two is vitamin. Where my pencil? Three is bifidophilus. Okay, wait a minute. No, it's not bifidophilus, Betty. Oh, okay. Uh, my scratchy writing here. My electronic writing not that good. Vitamin. No, it's not bifidophilus. It's another one. You're on the right track, though. It starts with a B. Okay. Nobody get number one? No, I can't get that one. That one. Think about it. It got two. It got two ends in there. What are them ends supposed to be? B 
Nutrition. Nutrition. <laughs> there you go. Both of y'all who said the same time. There you go. Nutrition. <laughs> All right, y'all got to get the last one then. Y'all done got that. Oh yeah, but I think being holistic and living holistically, this has really helped me. Okay, it's helped me to be here. Okay, that and the Holy Spirit has helped me to be here to even be here talking in this class right now with y'all. So I I give all that to the, the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm trying to do now. Is just advance God's kingdom. I would I wouldn't be here without them. <laughs> All right, Betty, why don't you pray us out? Okay. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the information that we have received. Help us to apply that in every area of our life. We thank you, Lord, for this information. And I just ask that you bless each and every student that was here tonight and bless those that was not able to make it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs>